in this video we are talking about delta h so first of all we are discussing delta h for call option and then later on we will discuss delta h for put option again if you just look at the term it says delta h so if i just talk about the term hedging so you must be familiar with the term hedging now why do we do hedging when when we face the risk like we do hedging for currency and we also do hedging for interest like let's say for example i have to make payment of 100 dollars after 2 months like i have to make payment of how much 100 dollar after 2 months so now i'm facing the risk that after 2 months the dollar price may go up so if the dollar price increases so i will end up paying more right i will end up paying more in my local currency so i'm facing the risk right so whenever you feel you will face a risk you will go for hedging okay so through hedging you will try to manage your risk you will try to reduce your risk although we can't eliminate the risk but we can try to reduce the risk to a certain extent right uh, but over here in this topic we are not talking about the risk management for currency or the risk management for interest no okay this thing is different it is totally different so in order to understand this scenario in order to understand what is basically delta h uh, let me create a scenario okay now let's say i am the seller of call option i am the writer of call option okay i have written call option so if i have written call option so it means i have given the other person the right to buy the shares from me call option means right to buy right so since i am the seller so it means i have given the other person the right to buy the shares from me okay okay now in future the buyer and uh, the buyer of call option they can exercise the option against you right okay now buyer will only exercise the option in the future if there is a gain for them if they see that there is a gain so then only they will exercise the option which is quite logical okay because if they see that there is a loss so they will have the option okay okay now in the future if buyer exercises the option so you have to give shares to that person and he will give you the exercise price see in this whole scenario i am the seller okay so in future if the buyer exercises the option so being the seller i have to give him shares and he will give me the exercise price so whatever exercise price was agreed so he will pay you that exercise price and you have to give him the shares at that exercise price at that rate which was initially decided between uh, the two of you right now let's say you have decided an exercise price of 10 pa okay so in future the buyer if he exercised the option so now i have to give him shares at an exercise price of 10 pound he will give you if he, he will give you 10 pound and now you have to give shares to that person okay so it means that the being the seller i i need to have some shares with me i should be having some shares with me right so that whenever he comes up in the future i can give those shares to that person and he will give me the exercise price right so it means being the seller you must be having some shares right so that i can hedge myself okay i can hedge myself now the question is that how many shares do i need to hold i am not talking about option over here i am talking about shares over here okay so just now the question is that how many shares do i need to hold with myself so now answer can't be one is to one you can't say that since um, you know, there is one option so i need to hold i need to hold one share no it can't be the case okay otherwise you know if if that would have been the case and this topic would not have existed so ratio can't be one is to one okay it can't be the case that since uh they have one option with them so i need to hold i need to hold one share now it can't be the case okay so again the problem is that how many shares should i hold because see in the future he can come up at any time 
and he can he can give you the exercise prize and and he can ask for shares from you so you need to have you need to hold some shares with you right you are the seller right so that and that that is a problem for you so now delta h it will basically tell you the number of shares that you need to hold in relation to the call option written okay who who will tell you this thing delta h it will tell you how many shares you need to hold in relation to the call option written okay so it's basically a hedge ratio delta is a hedge ratio okay so if you have written call option delta h will give you the information that how many shares you need to hold in order to hedge yourself i repeat if you have written the options if you have written the call option so delta will tell you how many shares you need to hold in order to hedge yourself okay now over here basically you have to use a formula now let's look at a formula uh, the formula is shares upon nd1 is equal to option so this is the formula shares upon nd1 is equals to option now we will see how to use this formula but before that uh, just look over here it's it is shares over nd1 so it means that in order to use this formula first of all we need to compute nd1 without that i can't find out the number of shares that i need to hold right so firstly i need to compute nd1 okay so we know how to calculate nd1 right you will just apply your steps first of all you will compute your d1 then d2 in fact we don't need d2 over here you will just calculate your d1 value using the formula and then you will compute nd1 okay so you will easily get to know that how much is your nd1 and then you can easily apply the formula okay now let's say for example if i have written example i have written 10000 call option okay i am the seller and how many call option have i written i have written 10000 call option okay so now by using this formula i can easily find out how many shares i need to hold in order to hedge myself right so let's apply the formula now assuming that over here nd1 is 0.75 this is just an assumption in the exam you will first calculate your nd1 and then you will apply the formula okay i'm just assuming it okay now let's use this formula so is equals to shares divided by nd1 nd1 is 0.75 okay so i'm writing 0.75 over here is equals to option written right so how many options have you written 10000 so i'm writing 10000 over here so you need to find out the number of shares uh, which you need to hold right so we can easily find out this 0.75 will move to the other part of the equation and it will be multiplied with 10000 so number of shares would be 7500 right your answer will be 7500 now what is the interpretation for this that if i have written 10000 call option then i need to hold 7500 shares with me because in the future whenever the buyer will come so uh, he will give you the exercise price and have to offer him i have to give the, uh, i have to give the shares to him right so how many shares will i give him 7500 okay now this formula could also be used in one more way let me tell you now let's say for example writer of call is having 200 shares okay so just look at the statement i'm saying writer of the option is having 200 shares i'm not using the term option so this time he is having the shares with him 
so with the help of this formula you can find out that how many options he can write okay so if you have the shares with you so this formula will tell you that how many options you can write okay so let's apply it let's uh, take nd1 to be 0 0.664 okay 0.664 now again let's use the formula is equals to it was shares so this time shares are 200 right so i'm writing 200 over here divided by nd1 which is 0 0.6664 is equals to option so this time this formula will tell you that if you have 200 shares with you that how many options you can write so answer will be around 300 right around 300 so it means that if i have 200 shares with me then how many options can i write i can write 300 options okay so i hope the interpretation is clear now you know in the exam maybe the examiner might ask you to write down the interpretation from the perspective of buyer so this was the interpretation from the perspective of seller, right? So let me repeat it from the seller's point of view. So if seller is having 200 shares, then he can write 300 options. Now let's talk about buyer. So if buyer is having 300 options, so in future, he can exercise 200 shares. Because in day one, buyer will be having the option with him, right? They won't be having the shares in day one, right? They will be having the options with them. Okay, so in uh, so if buyer is uh, buyer is having three hundred options, so in future they can exercise two hundred shares. Okay, so I hope the interpretation is now clear. Okay, so you, we, we, uh, we don't know that uh, from whom uh, from whom's perspective you have to write down the interpretation. Maybe he can ask you to write down the interpretation, uh, interpretation from the perspective of seller, or he can even ask you to write down the interpretation from the perspective of buyer. Okay, so you should be well prepared. Okay, so remember this thing that delta can be used in two ways. It can, uh, if, if, uh, for seller, it will tell you that uh, if you have written the option and how many shares you need to hold in order to hedge yourself. And for buyer, it can tell you that if you have uh, options with you, so it, will, it, it, it can tell you that how many shares you can exercise in the future. Now let's look at a question. Uh, that is from the notes. The name of the question is Uniglo. Uh, that is on page 26 of the notes. Uh, let's quickly read the, uh, the requirement first. Uh, requirement one. It says device a delta H that is expected to protect the investment against the changes in share price until winter. Delta may be estimated using ND1. So you have to devise your delta H. And since he is saying that delta may be H uh, may be estimated using ND1, so it means he is talking about call option, right? Because I told you that for call option, delta is ND1. Okay. Okay, then we will later on look at requirement two. So let's read the question. It says, assume that your company has invested in 100,000 shares of Uniglo PLC, a manufacturer of light bulb. You're concerned about the recent volatility in Uniglo share price due to the unpredictable weather in the UK. You wish to protect your company's investment from a possible fall in Uniglo share price until winter in three months time, but do not wish to sell the shares at present. No dividends are due to be paid by Uniglo during the next three months. 
otherwise we know very well that how to deal with this statement if he says that they they have paid a dividend during next three months so we know how to deal with this thing right all right now let's look at the market data it says uniglo current share price which is 200 pence so you can convert this into dollar so that will be two dollar right so that current share price that is basically your pa then call option exercise price is 220 pence so in dollar it will be 2.2 so exercise price that is your pe which will be 2.2 then time to expiry that is three months so you need to convert this into year right so it will be three divided by 12 which will be 0.25 so T will be 0.25. Okay, interest rate R, uh, that is 6%, that is basically your R. And volatility of Uniglo share, that is 50% standard deviation per year. So that is basically your S, 0.5. Assume that option contract R for the purchase or sale of unit of 1,000 shares. So you have to remember that in one contract, they have 1,000 shares. Okay, so we have to devise the delta H, right? So for devising the de delta H, you will be using your formula. That was shares upon ND1 is equal to option. But before that, you have to compute the value of ND1, right? Then only I can use the formula. So let's first compute the value of ND1. So for ND1, first of all, I need to compute D1. So let's first compute the value of D1. So D1 will be equal to LN. Now you can solve this on your Excel file. Okay, I'm solving it manually, but you have to solve it on your Excel file. And we know how to solve it on Excel, right? Okay, so LN into PA. PA was two. And PE that was 2.2. .2. plus r r is 0 0.06 right it is 6 percent 0 0.06 plus 0 0.5 which is in the formula into s s is 0.5 right again 0.5 so into s to the power of 2 so it is 0.5 to the power of two. Now bracket will be closed and this whole bracket will be multiplied by T. T is 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Now divided by S, which is 0 0.5 into root T, which is 0 0.25. Okay, so D1 will be, uh, now if you're solving it manually, so you will solve them one by one. So first of all, we can solve this thing ln into 2 divided by 2.2. This will be negative 0.953, now plus. Now you can solve the bracket. First of all, solve this bracket and then multiply your answer with 0.25. This will be 0 0.04625. Um, but please check it on your calculator or on your Excel file. Okay, then uh, now let's uh, solve the numerator. Uh, so I did the denominator. So it's 0.5 into root of 0.25. This will be 0.25. So D1 will be. Now remember D1 should be strictly to two decimal places. So it will be negative 0.2. I'm having negative 0.2, but please check your answers. Okay, so it means that over here, your row will be 0 0.2, 
column will be 0 0.00. Okay, now let's calculate ND1. So ND1 will be, you will write down 0.5. Now since D1 value is negative, so I will use a negative sign over here. Now you will look at your distribution table with a row of 0 0.2 and column of 0 0.00. This will be 0 0.0793. So ND1 will be 0 0.4207. Now you don't have to go till the value of call option because that is what not uh, that was not your requirement, right? You have to devise your delta H. Okay, now, now that we know the ND1, so now we can easily devise our delta H. Okay, now you can use your formula. So what was the formula? It was shares divided by ND1 is equals to option. Okay, so we know the shares over here, right? So I'm writing number of options that can be written. So in, in the question, we have been given with the number of shares, which are 100,000. So I'm writing 100,000 over here, divided by ND1, which is 0 0.4207. So number of call option that can be written will be two three seven six nine nine. So these are the uh, options that can be written, okay? So from the seller's perspective, what will be your interpretation? You will tell your examiner that if I have 100 shares with me, then I can write two, three, seven, six, nine, nine options. And from the buyer's perspective, what will be your interpretation? You will tell your examiner that if I have Two, three, seven, six, nine, nine option. Then in the future, I can exercise one hundred thousand shares. Okay, so now I, ho I hope the um, interpretation is clear. Now let's look at part B. So part B it says comment upon whether or not such a hedge is likely to be successful. Okay, so they are asking you whether this delta hedge is successful or not. So what have you done through Delta H? Uh, we have basically computed the number of options that can be written, right? So now he is asking you that, is this hedge successful or not? What do you think? See, how do we, how, how have we done all this calculation? Uh, we have used a formula in this entire calculation that was shares upon ND1 is equals to option. This is the formula that we have used over here. And with the help of this formula, we have uh, we have uh, find it out that how many options can be written, right? So the options that you have, uh, uh, the answer that you have just arrived at, so what do you think can, uh, will that answer remain constant? Can it change? Definitely it can change, why? Because you know, how uh, look at how you have just done all your calculation you have first computed your nd1 right so in nd1 what factors did you use for computing nd1 we have used p a p e r s n t right this is what i have used for calculating nd1 so don't you think that if any of these things changes like if, if your p a changes if r changes then d1 value will change and if D1 value changes, then your ND1 value, it will also change. And if ND1 value changes, so this whole device, uh, this whole delta H will be different, right? It will change. Okay, so it means that we can't maintain the delta H. Why? Because the factors which are used for computing D1, 
they cannot remain constant. See, share price, it changes on a daily basis. Your risk-free rate, even that could also change. Volatility could change. So the point is that if any of the factor changes, then your D1 value will change. And if D1 value changes, then ND1 value, that will also change, right? So it means that we can't maintain the delta H. It's nearly impossible, right? We can't maintain the delta H. Because if any of the factor changes, your D1 value will change. And ultimately, your ND1 value will change. Okay. So, and if your ND1 value is changing, so don't you think that the number of options that can be written, it will also change. Okay. So, you will say that uh, delta H cannot be 100% successful because delta keeps on changing. That will be your answer. Now let's talk about delta H for put option. So previously we were talking about delta H for call option. Now let's talk about put option. Okay, now let's understand this thing that how the delta H for put option will be devised. Okay, now let's say for example, I have shares of ABC company. So whenever you have shares of a company, so what risk are you facing? That share price can fall, right? If I have shares of any company, so I'm facing the risk that share price can fall, okay? Now, since you're facing the risk, so now you want to hedge this risk. Now you must be wondering that how can I hedge this risk? What can I do about it? Okay, so now the solution is that you can go and you can buy put option. Okay, what did I say? That you can go and you can buy put option. See, put option gives you right to sell. It gives you right to sell the shares at a fixed price. Okay, so if you have the put option with you, so don't you think that now you have reduced your risk, right? Because now I have taken an option to sell. I have taken a right to sell the shares at a fixed price. Now let's say, for example, I have taken the put option at an exercise price of PE is, let's say, 90. I've taken the put option at an exercise price of 90. Now you have the shares with you, right? And you're facing the risk that share price can fall. So what you did was you have taken a put option at an exercise price of 90. So it means I have a right to sell the shares at 90. So this 90 will be fixed for you, right? Now let's say in the market, if the share price falls to 80, okay, if the PA falls to 80, so this time you will be at a, uh, you will be at a benefit, right? How? Because even though in the in the market the share price have decreased to eighty, but still I can sell it for ninety. Why? Because I have the option with me, and because of that option, now the price is locked. That ninety dollars is locked for me. I can sell the shares for ninety, even though in the market its price is eighty, right? But still, I can go and I can sell my share for 90. So I will, be ha I will be having a gain, right? So obviously, in this situation, you will exercise your option. Okay, but if the situation was reversed, let's say if the, in the market, if the share price increases to 100. Now, obviously, this time, you will not exercise the option. You will have the option. Because why will I sell my share for $90 when I can go and sell it in the market for $100? So definitely this time you will have the option, okay? So that is something which is really good about options. If you if the, if there's a gain, you will exercise it, and if there's a loss, you will have the option. You will leave the option, okay? Now coming back to the uh, main point. So I told you that if you have the shares, so you are exposed to a risk, right? That share price can fall in the future. So what you can do is you can buy a put option. And I have given the whole logic behind this whole thing that if you have the put option, then how you, you can reduce your risk, right? So now I hope that thing is clear. Okay, now that I have told you that you can buy the put option, 
now you must be wondering that how many put option should i buy i have given you a solution but now the next question that will come up in your mind is that how many put option should i buy okay how many put option uh, do i need to buy in order to protect my investment so now this time again the delta of put will tell you the answer to this question okay because now you know the solution but now you must be wondering that how many put option should i buy so who will tell you delta will tell you okay so delta will tell you the number of put options that you need you should buy in order to protect your investment okay so again over here you will use the same formula but remember one thing that uh, whenever uh, we talk about put option so delta of put is n minus d1 and what was delta of call it was n d1 but over here it is n minus d1 okay now let me tell you how you you will calculate n minus d1 let's say for example if your d1 is you have computed your d1 and your answer is coming as negative 0.2 okay it is coming as negative 0.2 now we we need minus d1 right so what you will do is you will shift this negative sign to the other part of the equation okay so it will be minus d1 is equals to 0.2 okay so it means that when you will calculate your nd1 n minus d1 so d1 will be now 0.2 right because i have shifted the negative sign to the other part of the equation so d1 is now 0.2 okay it is now positive right because i have shifted the negative sign to the other part of the equation so now d1 is 0.2 okay so now well while calculating n minus d1 first of all you will write down 0.5 why because the normal distribution table which is given in the exam that is half right that's why we write 0.5 over here okay now my d1 is positive right because i have shifted the negative sign to the other part of the equation so now it is positive 0.2 so you will use a positive sign over here and then you will look at your normal distribution table okay so now i hope it is clear how this n minus d1 will be computed okay all right now since you want to know that how many put option you need to buy in order to hedge your investment so again for that you will use the same formula which we were using for call option now what was that formula it was shares over n minus d1 is equal to options okay this is the formula now let's discuss a question on uh, delta h so this is december 10 question question number 3 marengo company now let's read the requirement first part a it says estimate the number of otc put option contract that marengo company will need to hedge against any adverse movement in arian company share price provide a brief explanation of your answer so you have to write down the interpretation as well okay so first of all you you have to tell your examiner that how many put options merengo company needs to buy in order to hedge their investment then you have to write down a brief explanation of your answer and now read on the note over here it says note you may assume that delta of a put option is equal to n minus j1 right so this is what i told you so this is for seven marks and that is pure calculation uh, now look at part b it says discuss possible reason for the suggestion made by each of the three manager so that is for 13 marks now this theory is uh, from the scenario so only if you understand the scenario then only you can part, uh, answer part b of the question so you have to write down the possible reason of the suggestion given by the manager so managers have given few suggestion so you have to write down the reason behind the suggestion which which they are giving you okay so let's read it says a treasury uh, division of merengo company 
a large quoted company holds equity investment in various companies around the world one of the investment is in arian company in which marengo company holds 200000 share which is around 2% of the total uh, number of arian company shares traded in the stock market okay so how many shares do you have in arian company 200000 shares and which is only 2% of the total number of arian company shares okay so it means that we only have a very minor holding okay uh, then it says that over the past year due to general uh, strength in equity market following optimistic prediction of the performance of world economies merengo company investment have performed well however there is some concern that the share price of arian company may fall in the coming two months due to uncertainty in its market it is expected that any fall in share price will be reversed following this period of uncertainty so you have shares of arian company and they are facing the risk that share price may fall in the coming two months but they are saying that we are only facing this uncertainty for two months and after that the things will go back to normal so you are only facing it for two months you are only facing this risk for two months okay all right uh, then it says a treasury division manager in merengo uh, vinu lola and sam held a meeting to discuss what to do with the investment in arian company and they each made a different suggestion as follow okay so now each of the manager is giving the suggestion and you have to discuss the possible reason behind the suggestion which is given by each one of them so let's read number 1 vinu uh we know was of the opinion that merengo's shareholder would benefit most if no action were taken he argued that the cost of action proposed by lola and sam below would result in extra cost and possibly increase the risk in merengo company so what is vino saying he is saying that company should not take any action and then he is also saying that the suggestion given by uh, lola and sam that will result in extra cost for the company okay now you have to write down the possible reason so what do you think why vino is saying that company should not take any action yes what is the reason behind uh, the suggestion which is given by vino see in the first paragraph they have mentioned that they hold 200 shares in arian company and that is only 2% of arian company shares okay so you only have 2% holding in arian company okay which is a very minor holding okay so that's why um, uh, he is saying that company should not take any action because you only have 2% holding in arian company so obviously at 2% uh, you can't be an associate okay for you uh, know even in order to become an associate you need to have at least 20 25% holding so at 2% you can't even be an associate of the company okay so the holding is very insignificant okay then secondly basically uh, what company can do is they must be having they can maintain a well diversified portfolio okay they can maintain a portfolio of investment okay you can't go and just put all your money in one company shares okay so they they have various uh, they have investment in various companies as uh, it is mentioned in the first line so they have not put investment in only one single company in fact they have made investment in many different companies so it means that they have maintained a well diversified portfolio right so even if one company is not performing well so they have investment in other companies as well so maybe those companies are performing well so ultimately if you look at the net impact so it will it it, it won't affect you much okay so this is uh, this is the reason why we know is saying that company should not take any action because they already have a well diversified portfolio and in uh, arian company they only have 2% holding which is not uh, which is insignificant right 
Okay, so this is uh, the reason why we know is saying that no action should uh, should be taken. Okay, uh, now let's read about Lola. It says Lola proposed that Indian company shares should be sold in order to eliminate the risk of a fall in share price. So Lola is saying that company should altogether go and sell the shares so that we 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 don't face this risk. Okay, so what do you think? Should I follow the suggestion of Lola and and go and sell my shares? See if I sell the shares on Lola's suggestion. So now the question is, where will I use that cash? If I sell the shares, so I will get some cash, right? So where will I use that cash? Where will I reinvest that cash? So they they need to first of all see that do they have any investment opportunity where they can in, reinvest? And our question is not given any information regarding this, um, but you can uh, you can question this thing from uh, Julola that if even if we go and sell the shares, so where where will I reinvest my cash? Because I cannot keep my money idle. If I'm keeping my money idle, so that way you know uh, you will lose your. Uh, it will lose its value, right? It can only grow if you make reinvestment, okay? And then secondly, another issue is that we are only facing this uncertainty for two months, okay? And uh, they have the question is clearly mentioned that after two months, uh, the share price might increase. So Lola is basically ignoring the, uh, this thing. He is saying that just go and sell the shares. So obviously, a suggestion which Lola is giving, it's not um, like it's not reasonable, right? Because we are just facing the uncertainty for two months, and then after that, they are saying that share price might increase. Okay. Okay. Then number three, Sam suggested that investment should be hedged using an appropriate derivative product. Okay, now Sam is saying that we should use a derivative product against this risk. Uh, now, I think this is more logical because right now we are facing the risk, even though we are facing it for two months, but still we are facing the risk, right? So it is more appropriate to use a derivative product to go for hedging, right? You should go for hedging. That's more um, logical over here. Okay, so since they are facing the risk, so it's obvious that they should go and hedge the risk. And that is what we are studying in this topic, right? That how we can hedge this risk. You can hedge the risk by buying the put option, okay? Okay, then it says that although no exchange traded derivative product exists on Indian company shares, a bank has offered OTC over the counter option contract at an exercise price of 350 cents per share in a contract size of 1,000 shares each. Okay, now over here, traded options are not available. So that's why they're going for OTC product. So we have discussed this thing before also that OTC product are standardized, they're much, uh, they're cheaper as compared to, um, sorry, I mean, traded options are standardized, they're cheaper. Okay, as compared to OTC products, OTC are expensive. Okay, so you won't go for a, a, a OTC directly. If you have the uh, traded option, so you will go and you will buy that. You won't go for a, uh, a OTC product directly because they're, they're expensive. But over here, it's clearly mentioned that uh, no exchange with a derivative exists. That's why they're going for OTC product. They're taking the OTC product from the bank at an exercise price of 350. And how much is a contract size? 1,000 shares. So in one contract, they have 1,000 shares, okay? For the appropriate time period. Indian company current share price is 340 uh, cent per share. That is your PA 3.4. Although, although the volatility of the share price could be as high as 40%. So volatility, that is your standard deviation, right? So that is 0.4. So we know what is our PE, that is 3.5, PA is 3.4, and S is 0.4. Okay, then it says it can be assumed that 
Indian company will not pay any dividend in the coming few months, and the appropriate interbank lending rate will be four percent over that period. So over here we have been provided with interbank lending rate. Uh, RF is not given. So even though RF is not given, so uh, what what uh, what you will do is we will use we will assume that this is your R in this question. Although this is not your risk free rate. But since it is not given, so we will assume that this is our R. Okay, so R is 0 0.04. And how much is your T? Time to expiry. Two months, right? Because I'm facing the risk for two months, so I will take the derivative product only for two months. I will take the put option only for two months. Okay. So we know all the five components, P, A, P, E, R, S, and T. So we can quickly solve this uh, thing. Okay, so you don't have to compute the value of put option over here. You will only compute the value of n minus d. Okay. You guys can calculate the value of T1 on your own. I'm giving you some time. So quickly calculate the value of D1. Okay, so D1 that is coming as negative 0 0.06. Okay. Uh, now we, we need minus D1, right? So I will shift this minus sign over here. So it will be minus D1 is equals to 0 0.06. Okay, now you can find out your ND1. So ND1 will be, N minus D1 will be, so you will write down 0.5. Now D1 is positive 0 0.06 because I have shifted the negative sign to the other part of the equation. So it is positive, okay? So that's why I'm using a positive sign over here. Now you will look at your distribution table with a row of 0, 0.0 and column of 0 0.06. It will be 0 0.0239. Okay, so ND1. That is going to be 0.5239. That is your n minus d1. Okay, now you can use your formula. Which for shares, shares are 200,000, right? It's given in the question. Divided by n minus d1, which is 0.5239. Now that will give you the options which you should buy, put option. It will be 381752. Okay, so these are the options that you should buy to hedge your investment. Okay, so how many put option will you buy? 381752. Okay, now remember in the question they have given the contract size. They told us that in one contract there are 1000 shares. Okay, so now what I will do is I, I will just multi, I will just divide it with the contract size so that I know that how many contracts I have to buy. Okay, so number of sell option contract. So it is 381752 divided by 1000. Okay. So it will be around 382 contracts. Okay. 